First passengers can find their life jacket in their leg rest. You're traveling again? Didn't you just get back? Yeah, well now currently I've just arrived in London to attend the iStruct E board meeting to help guide this organization into the future and hopefully bring everyone more benefit within the structural engineering community. So let's make our way to the iStruct E event and learn a little bit about why you should sign up to iStruct E because it doesn't matter where you are in the world. So we're currently here at the iStruct E event and we currently have Naveen. So Naveen, where are you from? I am actually um, based in Ottawa. I'm working on a project in uh, Ottawa full time. Why would you think as being in Ottawa, you know, iStruct is typically a UK organization. Why would someone from Ottawa want to sign up to iStruct D? Well, I think as a young engineer, um, belonging to a community was very important to me. So I started right out of uh, graduation, even before graduation actually, I was part of the, I was a student member of iStruct D and I immensely enjoyed the, the monthly magazine. And then after graduation, I was surprised that not a lot of people in the industry were actually participating in extracurricular activities yeah. offered by iStruct D. And I saw that we actually have an active Ontario chapter I sent an email, I said, I want to join this, this group. And um, yeah, it's been a few years that I've attended their meetings, attended their very informative yes. webinars. I should say a very good balance of technical and non-technical. Yes, iStruct D is also more well-renowned. If you get chartered as a, as a structural engineer at iStruct D, it's more, it, it's, it's seen quite highly in Australia and I think quite a lot around the world. How about in Ontario? In Ontario, not so much. There is a little bit of a, a, a governance difference that's happening, but I, I, you know, as an, anyone, as a young ambition and engineer, should see that as a challenge. It's a technical exam. Just calibrate your skills, see where you stand compared to other engineers. I'm sure a lot of people would feel very confident if they pass that exam to see, okay, I'm meeting a certain industry requirement yeah. and I don't see why not. It's a little bit of investment, but you're getting very but, a lot of benefits. A lot in of benefit, but if I think in the investment though, helps you in the long run, especially when designing buildings, the material that you have to produce to even allow you to sit that exam yeah. is invaluable to you. Absolutely. Life. You know, I, I started studying for the exam last, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it this year, maybe the year after, yes. but I was going through the schematic design guide or the schematic design webinars and, and, um, and the training course we have on the, on the website. You would think, okay, I can come up with three or four schemes for a structural solution, but then the instructor shows you 12. Yes. So that expands your mind a little bit to see, oh, there are so many out of the box solutions that just because you haven't seen them typically doesn't mean that they don't exist. It's just, they are there, it's just the meeting, it's the, the question of meeting the expectations of the client, yes. for example. Yeah. Nice meeting you, Naveen. And yes, you too. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Get out and post anyway, it's all good. <laughs> okay. All right, we're here from Matt. He's one of the presidents of iStruct E, and we're just going to ask him some of the benefits that he'll find from being a member, especially an international member of iStruct E. Well, I think that's a really good point. And um, actually, the Institution of Structural Engineers, one of the primary benefits is the fact that we are a global institution. We've got members in just under 120 countries. And it's all about sharing knowledge and the networking of uh, structural engineers getting together either remotely or in person and just learning and sharing with each other. Uh, there's obviously the benefits of the, um, the, the examination and the, the technical requirements of membership, which demonstrate a capability and a, a professional standard. Um, but there's also these intangible benefits of actually being part of such a well-established um, learned society. 
So what are some of the benefits you see from like, especially mobility yeah. for getting the charter ship? I, I was going to say there's so many mutual recognition um, agreements that actually MI struct E is a globally recognized um, qualification and standard and it allows uh, engineers to move quite freely um, between uh, quite a few countries and their examination and professional review interview and everything that they went through to get that qualification is accepted in different countries. So it saves people having to re-qualify in whichever uh, country or... Um, yeah. Yes, so I'm the chair for the Southern African Regional Group. Um, what we've done, we've been in South Africa as a joint division with SAIC, which is the Southern African um, Institution for Civil Engineers, and ISTRACT E. We've been a, a joint division. In 2019, we decided, due to our requirement to increase our international footprint and being an international organization, we had to go and start afresh as the Southern African Regional Group. And for that reason, we started the group as a standalone, a standalone ISTRACT E um, regional yes. group. So now it's been almost three years. We've run through COVID. We've learned so much in COVID because now our world has opened up. It's not small anymore. It's not limited because we've got technology that helps us. Um, the focus now would go into interacting with neighboring countries that's got members in it, um, introducing the institution to people that would otherwise not know about the institution, helping a student that's sitting somewhere um, in Zimbabwe or Botswana or whatever other countries we've got close by would be, like I said, phase one approach, and then instilling what the benefits of the institution brings to a person sitting in a country that cannot afford to come to an international country um, but have the have the benefits of the institution doing that we open up the world of that localized student um, helping them to grow from being a student um, going into graduate membership and then going through the ranks depending what her or his uh, longing would be and his career or her career and then developing into structural engineer. Yeah. So that is the benefits of having interaction with students that we would other, otherwise not have interaction with. Yeah. It's just opening the minds of, of a student. Yeah. I think that my passion, and I always get so passionate about talking to students and saying, listen, do you know about the ISTRACT? And I don't like, know, what's ISTRACT? Oh my goodness, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> And then you can see them lighting up. A lot has happened to concrete development yes. um, in recent years. Well, recent years, this year, the stuff with the change of ratio was huge. In like, yeah, that changed a lot. And um, uh, but just the characteristics of concrete. Um, you know, we have much more fast setting concrete now and yes. uh, some very specialized high setting. I mean, the only reference to that was high aluminum cement, which um, in, in this strength of this materials. Yeah, it was really quite detailed. Does it say? Perfect, yeah, but the cover doesn't look that old. 76, uh, that, that was yeah. uh, updated in 96, so yeah, it's, it's quite old. Um, what did you think high strength concrete was back then? Yeah, it, it talks about very sort of slow strength being concrete, yeah. and uh, uh, concrete have moved on a lot. Uh, and I guess we're lucky in, in my area, we have very, very good concrete. Um, What's probably one of the biggest benefits you find for being a member of uh, Bystrock Day? The, the status it gives. So there are two aspects to that. First of all, for the individual, it inevitably means increased responsibility in the design office and an increase in salary. For the employer, um, if that, if, if particularly in the UK, if we're tendering for public sector work, it's a requirement to state the number of chartered engineers, both civil, structural, whatever, that 
are going to be working on that project and not only in that project, but in the whole of the company to provide reserve. And then I found when I was working on the Commission of Inquiry in Hong Kong, um, if you were a, if you were chartered structural engineer, you were up at that level. If you were a chartered civil engineer, you were below them. So the perception in, in Asia is that the structural engineering is top of the tree. So that's that's what for 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 many now to be fair, the majority of people who are structural engineers, they just treat it as a meal ticket. They've yes. they've got the qualification that enables them to work. They're never really then interested. But if they keep their eyes open, there's so much material available published by the institution for their benefit, most of which is free. Um, they should be encouraged to find out about what resources are available to them. The national loadings and that sort of thing may change from country to country and will inevitably. Seismic is another issue that uh, affects some countries and not the others. But yeah, the basic principles are the same. And uh, we as an institution think of ourselves increasingly as being a global institution and meeting the needs of those members overseas as well. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Nice to have met you yes, too. Nice to have met you. So we have some fascinating structures here in London. So we've got off to the side the famous London Bridge from the songs London Bridge is Falling Down, but also some new structures such as Bishop Gate just behind the walkie talkie. You've got the gherkin behind it, which you can't see in this shot, the shard in the other direction for its unique form, but also the walkie talkie. And the walkie talkie arguably has one of the most fascinating stories. You see, look at its shape. You can see it's shaped somewhat like a parabolic mirror. Now, why it may look good to start off with, this was actually one of its biggest downfalls. As we know, when for any parabolic mirror, it can help focus and target light. Similar to what a magnifying glass did. This is exactly what this shape did. I was actually mounting car dashboards and other areas. So I had to address this by shaping the windows so it didn't create that same focused beam of light. As engineers, when we're looking at shape, not just looking at the standard practice and the structures behind it, but is there any other things that may affect the structure overall? So this would have cost a lot of money to address after the fact, and something that could be addressed early in the piece to stop this effect from occurring. We have a look at the blocks just up here. What they do is they allow you to post tension the cables so they lay the cables out straight, but then to get the force into them, you need to tighten them up and put pre-tension into them. So this allows them to lock them off and tension up these really big cables. In addition to the post-tension cables, we can also see these cables back here tying it back down. Because the force would try and rip it up, they need to tie it back down to the ground to stop those tension forces ripping the structure apart. So what they would have done is they would have put a big torque screw onto it to tension it up and put the tension into the system. So we've got another fascinating structure here behind us, and this is the London Eye. So the London Eye is a giant wheel that you can go on to have sides of London. And it's fascinating as it's got the outer ring, which is in compression, while the main cables that are supporting the structure are in tension, big tension cables to keep it in place. As we can see, it's also slowly rotating. So there's a torque force that it also needs to deal with. And if we look at it from the side, we can see there's cantilevering outside the River Thames. So there's a lot of actions that this structure needs to resist, both in dynamic tension from the torque actions, that kind of tension cable and compression ring on the outside, and those cantilevering actions. Mm -hmm. 